Uh, good afternoon. Uh, I would like to thank the organizer for the invitation to, show, to share our work with this important audience. Um, to, to start this presentation, uh, I would like to say that um, we, are, uh, we have recently celebrated the 40 years uh, from the birth of Louis Brown, who, uh, in 1978, Louis uh, was the first test tube uh, baby uh, in, the, in the world. Um, even though we, uh, huge efforts uh, have been made to, to uh, help <laughs> infertile couples to conceive a baby and to have a baby, after all this time, uh, assisted fertility techniques have only increased the chances of a conceived baby uh, only by 20 to 30 percent. Uh, during all this time, we, can, we cannot improve this percentage. And the question is why? At least for, from the all sites perspective, the reason is, is that because we don't know how the all sites works. So, Every time that we talk or manipulate the, the all site, we name different aspects. We call the all site maturation, to mention the nuclear or cytoplasmic all site maturation. We name the fertilization. We also mention the support, how the all site support the development of a healthy embryo. But uh, we don't know yet in details what, is, what processes we are manipulating when we try to to conceive a baby by uh, assisted uh, uh, reproductive techniques. So uh, to mention all these aspects, we mentioned that the, we, refer, we refer to the all-site competence. So our lab is uh, interested in dilucidate some of these aspects like all site maturation, fertilization, and the development of the pre of the preimplantatory embryo. And uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about the two uh, first uh, topics. So um, how the all site is fertilized. Um, this image show an all site, a human all site, and many sperm around them. To, uh, to, do, to get a, a, a healthy embryo, only one sperm needs to fuse with the oocyte. So if we have more than one sperm, that means that we have polyspermy. So what is the, the mechanism uh, that the oocyte use to avoid polyspermy? This, me this mechanism is called cortical granule exocytosis or cortical reaction. And this uh, is a very particular exocytosis in which after the arriving of the fertilizing sperm, the sperm fuse with the plasma membrane and the, the granules located in the cortical region are fused with the plasma membrane to secrete their content and then um, alterate the sona pellucida and the uh, peribitaline space and this creates a barrier that uh, avoids the entry of the, of the new sperm. So we are interested in dilucidate how is the mechanism of this very particular exocytosis. Uh, uh, everything that we know about exocytosis has been studied in neurons. Um, before that, I would like to say to you that uh, these cortical granules uh, only fuse if one sperm arrives and is fused with the oocyte. And the, the, these granules never are renewed if the sperm binds. So as, as I mentioned, the, uh, this person, the Rothman, Dr. Rothman, Sheckman and Sudov, uh, uh, won the Nobel Prize in 2013 uh, because their contribution uh, in, the, um, in the mechanism of the exocytosis, of the membrane fusion during this process. Um, thanks for the, uh, for the talk uh, of Dr. Mayorga, that um, the, the membrane fusion occurred uh, thanks to the, uh, a complex called SNAR complex. 
And in this slide, I want to highlight that uh, in neurons, the vesicles uh, secrete their content when after membrane fusion, the vesicle uh, fuse with the plasma membrane and secrete their, their, their content. And this is repeated many, many times to release the neurotransmitter. Um, what I want to highlight here is that this complex formed by proteins name, which name are SNAP and NSF, which is very important in neurons because this complex uh, release the cis uh, snare complex form after fusion to allow the, the cycle of this uh, fusion or, or of these vesicles. So uh, the proteins that I mentioned, SNAP, alpha SNAP, and NSF, disassemble this complex and allow the, uh, the cyclicity of the process. So what about oocytes? <coughs> if I mention that these granules, uh, not, there, there is not uh, renewed. So the question, the question is that are these, pres these proteins present in mouse oocytes? And as a parenthesis, I'm going to tell you what means a SNAP, a SNAP and NSF. A SNAP is an, an acronym for soluble NSF attachment proteins. It's an NSF cofactor, and there are three isoforms, alpha, beta, and gamma. And NSF is an acronym for N-ethylmalimida sensitive fusion and is, as, is in HPAs. So um, the first thing that we did was uh, to find if these proteins are present in mouse oocytes. So RT-PCR assays show that alpha SNAP, gamma SNAP, and NSF are present in mouse oocytes. When we perform experiments to, to see how, the pro, how is the protein expression, we found that the, for all these proteins, alpha, gamma, and NSF, the protein expression analyzed through different stage in mature oocytes, mature oocytes, and activated oocytes didn't change. So then we studied the localization of, the, of these proteins in mouse oocytes. And what we found is that uh, the NSF, sorry, alpha SNAP and NSF were present mainly in the, in the cortex region through different stage of oocyte maturation or egg activation. So, um, so we found the proteins. We know that at least alpha SNAP and NSF are located in the same region that cortical granules, so we wonder if they participate in the uh, cortical granule exocytosis. So we need to do that, we need to measure cortical granule exocytosis. Before our work, uh, there, there was no way to measure uh, quantitatively uh, the cortical granule exocytosis, and we set up a very special method well, here is just to tell you uh, that we collect GD, uh, different stage of oocytes, immature oocytes, mature, and then we can activate to stimulate the cortical reaction. Uh, and we can do it by, uh, not only by sperm, if not for uh, using strontium. Strontium is a parthenogenetic activator that mimics the fertilization uh, with the sperm. So uh, going back to the simple method, method we, um, we set up this functional assay to um, evaluate the cortical reaction. Just to, I'm going to explain in this part uh, how we interpret the result to um, to facilitate the interpretation of next slide. So using a fluorescent lectin called uh, LCA, uh, we can stain the cortical granule content. So if we stain the cortical granule content in a non-activated oocyte, we can count this point and be, we refer this number this density as a 100% because it are, represent all the cortical granules present in the oocytes. But if we activate the sperm with, sorry, the, o the oocyte with the strontium, we are going to stimulate the cortical reaction and the cortical granules are going to 
diminish in the, in the oocytes. So we count this and we can see here that the cortical granules after activation is low, lower than the control. Um, if we add an inhibitor, we are going to block the process and uh, if we activate the oocyte with the strontium, the cortical region, reaction is going to be inhibited. So this is the, how we are going to interpret the following experiment. So when, what we did, uh, now we collect the oocyte, we micro-inject different regions that can block the protein that we are studying, and then using the uh, functional assay, we quantify the cortical reaction. Uh, uh, and then what we found when, was that when we, we micro-inject anti-alpha SNAP, the cortical uh, reaction was inhibited. So uh, in this case, uh, uh, on your left, uh, you can see representative images for every condition analyzed. So this result say, says that alpha SNAP is required for cortical reaction. Um, similarly, we also microinject anti-gamma SNAP, and in this case, we didn't find any difference. So that means that alpha gamma SNAP is not required for cortical reaction. So then we ask if, the, if alpha SNAP require, requires NSF activity in this process. So to do this, we use four different strategies to block the NSF function or to, to, in order to understand how the process is going on. So the results, uh, we, when we test an inhibitor, an, an uh, in NSF inhibitor, we observe that, sorry, we observe that um, the, the in, in, inhibition of the cortical reaction was uh, concentration dependent. When we uh, microinject an alpha mutant, which binds NSF, but has a decreased ability to stimulate its ATPase activity, we found that the cortical reaction was inhibited. Similarly, then we microinject uh, an NSF mutants, recombinant, uh, recombinant proteins, which binds NSF, uh, sorry, binds to a snare complex, but is not able to disassemble. So what we saw is that the cortical reaction was inhibited. So this means that uh, the ATPase activity of NSF is required for cortical reaction. And finally, we microinject the anti-NSF antibody, and again, we found that the cortical reaction was inhibited. So meaning that NSF is required for cortical granule exocytosis. So going back to the first questions, are SNAP and NSF uh, present in all sites, even when the cortical granules are not renewed. So the, the experiment showed that the answer is yes. But we propose a, a working model where this complex is acting in a pre-fusion step, not in the post-fusion step, like in neurons. Uh, so. La, as a conclusion, we, we mentioned that the fails, failures in the molecular mechanism of cortical reaction leads to fertility and infertility problems. So and it's very important to study this process to understand how it works and if we can design new uh, uh, contraception uh, methodology. So in the second part, I'm going to talk about maturation, about oocyte maturation. The oocyte maturation is a very complicated mechanism where uh, both nuclear and cytoplasmic uh, mature. And this maturation has to be synchronized. It's highly synchronized. Um, as a note, I would like to mention that every time that a baby born from an in vitro mature oocyte, it's a new scientific paper, or it's a new headline in the newspaper. So what they don't say is how many times they try. Um, we, so we, we wonder how is the cortical reaction in in vitro mature oocytes. And this is what I want to show you now. 
Uh, this we cannot see very well, but believe me that this is an, an immature oocyte. And in the red points are the cortical granule stained by lectin. During maturation, from immature, from mature, these cortical granules are translocated to the cortical region. That means that the, uh, this oocyte it's, is mature. And we wonder how is the localization uh, of cortical granules in in vitro mature oocytes. Um, what we found is that uh, the cortical granules in in vitro mature oocytes can translocate to the cortical region, but they, they form uh, irregular limit or an irregular boundary between the cortical regions uh, and the cortical granules free domain. So this is a normal oocyte, normal mouse oocyte, uh, where we can distinguish two domains, one with, with, with cortical granules and the other one, and the other one uh, is free of them. But in in vitro mature oocytes, they can translocate, but they, this limit is not uh, is not uh, is not is not regular. It's irregular. So we wondered if in this condition, uh, how is the cortical uh, reaction? Um, we to study this, we set up a, a lab imaging of cortical granules uh, exocytosis using the same lectins. We we were, we were, were able to uh, detect the signal incubating the oocyte in the presence of this lectin. If this is the case, if we incubate the, pro the, the oocyte in the presence of the fluorescent lectin, we can, uh, after activation with strontium, which mimic a, a, a sperm, we can see the increase in the, in the fluorescence intensity in the oocyte. However, if we don't add the strontium activator, we can see that the signal didn't, doesn't change. So in the panel B, we have this oocyte in a 3D surface plate showing that these cells has more fluorescence than the control one. And one more detail, we can see that the, 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 the shape of this is a semicircle corresponding, corresponding to the cortical granule region. So to validate this method, we also in vitro fertilize oocyte with sperm. And as you can see here, that, that semicycle is seen in this embryo, both, in both in the equatory plane in this uh, in this image and in the superficial plane. So with this, we validate our method. So going back to the question, how is the cortical reaction in in vitro mature oocytes? So, wow, oops. Um, well, this is a, something interesting, not, not for answer the question. The, that, that is because doing this experiment, we found another way to um, quantify cortical reaction because we noticed that, that the oocytes, after a strontium uh, um, activation, in the presence of lectin, uh, show these points that we call exudate points. And we also can quantify this point. So now we have three methods. We, can, we have a functional assay in permeabilized and fixed cells we have a live imaging of cortical reaction to measure cortical reaction, and also this is a simplified method to quantify cortical reaction only in fixed cells without permeabilization. So now, going back to the question, so how is the cortical reaction So in in vitro mature oocytes? The first surprise was to see that in vitro mature oocytes did not respond very well to the strontium. So only 10% of the oocytes that we test were able to respond to the activation with the strontium. So they are not working very well. <coughs> so next, we, uh, only for that, those that were, were able to respond, we analyzed what, what, what was the start time of the cortical reaction. And what we found that for, nor for ovulated or, or oocytes, the time was 15 minutes. After adding the activator, 15 minutes later, 
the uh, cortical reaction occurs. And we can see here between these two images. However, for in vitro mature oocytes, they, uh, the, the cortical reaction start, start late, uh, around 30, 35 minutes, as indicated in these images. So then we analyze it using the, the power of, of the fluorescence, we analyze the kinetic of the cortical reaction for both uh, conditions, for uh, in vivo mature oocyte and in vitro mature oocyte, and we found that uh, in, in ovulated or in vivo oocyte, the, sorry, uh, the response is, uh, is rapid and synchronous. However, in the in vitro mature oocytes, the response is late and asynchronous, showing that the in vitro maturation is not supporting the cortical reaction, at least in these two tested media. So in conclusion for this and second and last part, part, we say that live imaging of cortical reaction reveals that in vitro mature uh, oocytes are not fully competent to secrete their context. In addition, this, uh, uh, this, um, we propose this uh, live imaging of cortical granules as a biological test. We don't have any biological test to, 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 to see how is the, uh, the competence of the oocyte. So we are proposing this method as a bi 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 biological test to evaluate the competence of in vitro mature oocyte. And finally, these findings invite to review all the results and conclusions of the literature obtained when I with in vitro mature oocyte because they, uh, since they should not be extrapolated for in vivo or ovulated oocyte. So now, finally, I want to thank the person who made the, the experiment that I showed you today, Dr. De Paola, and doc, uh, who works in, in the SNAP and NSF, and, and Dr. Andrea Capa, who performed the live imaging of, of cortical reaction. Um, Thank you for your attention and um, for those uh, who are visiting Mendoza in this time of the year. Feliz Vendinia. Mm -hmm.